A peer group is a collectivity in which the members share some common characteristics. It could be by age, it could be by ethnicity, a number of things. So a collectivity in which people share uh, a common characteristic. But we'll talk about peer groups and actually this is some characteristics of a peer group. They tend to have a high degree of social solidarity, uh, togetherness. Uh, a hierarchy usually develops. Now, usually you usually think of hierarchy as anything but uh, a peer group. You don't want that. Yeah. Because a peer group, especially when I'm talking about kids, you peer groups here, they reject adult values. Rejection of adult values is important characteristic of the youth peer group. And the last thing, therefore, you think that we want is hierarchy, because you associate hierarchy with adults. But within a peer group, group of friends, your peers, a hierarchy does develop. After a short period of time, the peer group begins to look a lot like an adult group. They have different values associated with it, but in terms of a hierarchy, some people take on leadership. There's usually, you know, you've got those who are in a power position within, leaders, you've got followers. There's a hierarchy that develops within a peer group. So social solidarity, the rejection of adult values. Those are the things I'd like you to know about the youth peer group. The functions, and these are especially important. When a kid becomes involved with his friends, it's usually the first time in his or her life that the socialization that is going on is not intentional. The family sets out to teach you. The school set out to teach you. The church set out to teach you. And if you buy into functionalism, which we talked about at the beginning of the class several weeks ago, the idea here is that they're teaching you the same values where the church and the schools and the family are all working together to promote certain ideals and values, that's when things work well. But the socialization that goes on, all this, is intentional within those institutions. School sets out with certain goals. We'll talk later on about how the school, and this, if you want to debate this, it's going to be interesting to debate, but I would argue that the school set out to create good little American kids. They're not out to they try intentionally to socialize you with the bigger, the bad. You know, that you will learn these values. We talked before about the whole idea of public schools. public schools. Well, I would say that the private schools do a pretty good job of say, doing the same thing. may not be exactly the same values that they're, they set out to teach. teach you this so that you will be that. It's not like, oh, let's see what happens today, you know? No, they set out to, you know, to go go and buy. When the kid gets involved with um, a peer group, socialization still goes on. You're still learning the norms. There are norms associated with the uh, peer group. But the socialization that occurs is not as intentional. If there is not a goal in mind, and everything is geared towards reaching that goal, the first time, in a sense, when you're associating with your friends, you're free. You know, you're free for that intentional socialization. You're not free. Counting you with this. And that, it comes a time when it has to happen. But it's not going to happen with the schools. It's not going to happen around the churches. It's not going to happen uh, with your family. Right? So the socialization that occurs with a peer group is not intentional. And therefore, it can go a variety of different ways. That's one of the things that scares parents about. Okay? We've had control over you. Now we're losing control. And we all like to have control. Or we like to think. Well, we, we want to have control. And eventually, as we go older, we learn, maybe this is part of the socialization process as we get older, we learn that we don't have nearly as much control as we wanted to and at one time thought we did. You cannot control everything. In fact, you can control Relatively little. How much control do we have over our lives? Certainly we want to control the lives of our kids to a point. And if we're not controlling, we want the schools to control it. Or we want the church to control it. And now they're out there with their kids and we have lost control.
control. When, and I think it's one of the hardest things for parents to deal with, is the loss of control. 